Mark. Mark, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Just had a hard time finding the mute button. Sorry. <laughs> Not a problem. Just want to make sure that you can actually hear me. Yep. Sounds good. Yep. Mark. Oh, the other Mark. Hey, Mark. All right. I think Sarah may have mentioned that she can't make it. So hopefully at least Clemens can make it since it's really his PRs that we're kind of talking about. So let's give him a few minutes. Stanley. Morning. Afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening for all our, uh, for everyone else. Yeah. Whenever somebody does that on a call, the first thing that runs through my mind is just say hello. I'll cover it. Clemens, see if he's going to make it. Because I think he, I think he said he was going to make it. So we'll see. In the meantime, let me share my screen. So I had to leave early yesterday. Um, did any of the other guys stay on for the rest of the call? Uh, yeah, um, I know I was there and I think Mark Peak was there as well. Do, do you want to summarize what happened at the end? Because I know, I, I think from what I heard, you guys did make it through the other two points in PR 117, um, I guess talking about middleware and framework. What, what happened after you left that PR? What, what, what were the topics that were discussed? Um, I'd be curious to hear kind of like Kathy and, and or Clemens <laughs> and or Zara's take on uh, what was discussed, but it, it kind of felt like we devolved again, like things went off the rails a little bit. Really, what was the well? What was the supposed subject area uh, supposed to be? Let me pull up the pull request and um, work through. Uh, Mark, do you have anything <laughs> comparable to? Uh, from the... So I was I wasn't on the call yesterday morning. Oh, you weren't. Sorry, I thought no, you were. No, it's fine. I I popped on to the one on uh, Monday, but not tonight. Yesterday. Well, well, um. Stanley, for 117, do you think there was general agreement on the call yesterday about its direction? And it was and things only derailed once you left 117? Or was it within 117 that things kind of went um, weird? So we were talking about... Uh, where, sorry, I'm trying to dig down to where the points actually wound up. Um, so you, you were there for points, um, 
one and two, you said, right? And then for three yeah. and four, we were going to continue on. Yeah, because yeah, well, one and two were mainly the first yeah. day, which I guess is Monday. Then yesterday, I left, I think, halfway through number three or something like that, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, I think we actually, we did make some progress in that. Um, the assumption was we were going to, so Clemens and or anyone else interested was going to write a separate action related to, or write a separate issue related to clarifying middleware. That was really kind of where the <laughs> things started to fall apart was um, middleware can be, you know, message brokers, it can be, you know, API gateways, it can be any number of things. And part of the problem, were you here for this, by the way, Doug, or had you left by that point when we started this discussion? Yeah. Um, so I think I left when... I'm just trying to remember at what point, but either way, like my, in in kind of sitting through the, the discussion, it felt like we were kind of mixing and matching use cases. Um, and it's, it drives some of the confusion when we say middleware, I think um, <clears throat> that there are so many things we're trying to consolidate into like this one statement. So there was a probably a, like, there will likely be a separate issue file to kind of clarify the different, you know, use cases and different potential um, implementations of what middleware will actually look like in the world, okay. because it was driving kind of a, a you know, from an IOT perspective, right? Like versus using message pack versus like a Kafka perspective using just, you know, schema, like obviously like validated, you know, messages say like via Avro or whatever it is. But right. um, the idea just generally was that. And then let me see. Well, if... Clemens joined the call now. So, hey, Clemens. Uh, um, I was just asking for a status on where we left off yesterday since I had to drop early. Hi, Doc. This is hey, Kathy. Hey, hey, Kathy. Yeah. So I, I think you know we uh, we were in number kind of number three. Um, you know, the, could you scroll up? Um, we talk about the, yeah. I think I just follow up on the um, on the on the middleware. I think we would we said we agreed we would add some example there, like right? because you know I, I don't know who, who was speaking before. Is it Tom? Oh, then okay. So I think we were saying, you know, yeah, this middleware is a very generic terminology. We would like more cl clarification on that. Um, it could, based on this uh, definition of the middleware, it looks like it could be, you know, a service platform. It could be a, a router, and, and it could be many other things. So we would like to at least give some example. Okay, Sorry. but it, but it sounds like. But, but it sounds like from what Stanley was saying that that may be something that we can do in a follow-on pull request, right? In a follow-on? You mean in a separate document? No, no, no. In, a, in, a, in, a, in another pull request after this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, another pull request? Okay. Yeah, just, uh, just so we can make some forward progress. Okay. But it's, so, hey, Clemens. You there? Clemens, I think you're on mute if you're talking. Oh, yes, I am. Um, there we go. <laughs> hi. Sorry, I was uh, um, held up by technology. Not a problem. So we're just trying to figure out where you guys left off yesterday and what the next steps are based upon where you guys left things. So my understanding is we were through. Um, there were also comments that were filed on this, doc on this part of the document um, after we left, and then I addressed them all. So I think we're my understanding is we're done with this and then we had we we veered into a discussion of um one of the items because someone asked like what the namespace story is about so uh, we talked about that a little bit but what that might mean um we don't have a, a we might do a clarification i think i think where that ends is that we're going to do a clarification of the of the meaning of the field or probably gonna have a, have a discussion about that um separately and then um, I think that's where we were. Okay. So it sounds like 117 is kind of behind us and now we're moving on to a particular attribute, whether it's namespace or one of the other ones, right? Yeah, so I think, I think the, the, namespace, the namespace is one where um, uh, it's, for me, it's a, it's a nice to have, it's not so central. 
Okay. So would it be then wiser to talk about a different attribute that we can get uh, hopefully quicker agreement on? Yeah, so I would like to talk about pull request 95. Okay, what do other people think about uh, number 95? Well, I believe... Uh, because that talks, about, that talks about specifically about changes to the properties source, source ID, source type, and renames them. Right, and, this, and it introduces topic and subject, right? Yes. Yeah, I think yesterday we were, um, uh, you know, discussing what's the uh, relation between the namespace, the classification, and the subject, right? In the yeah, in and the, the and 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 the namespace, the namespace. I want to keep that out because the namespace is basically just giving outer framing to all those concepts. But you, I, I don't think you can really talk argue about namespace unless the 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 inside of it is clear. So which means the topic and the subject is clear. So I would like I would like to table the namespace discussion and and talk about topic and subject first, and then we can go and decide whether we actually need the namespace. Right. Okay. So, what do people think? Is it okay, or do people agree with the next step being to to look at this PR and talk about topic and subject? Does that sound okay to people? Or is there some yeah. other attribute that that seems like it should be of a higher priority? I think it's fine with me. Um, but at a high level, I would like to understand, you know, what's the relation between you know, what we um, discussed at the, the other um, PR, which, you know, mentions classification and subject. Yeah, so that's, I think that's what we're, 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 that's exactly what we're here for. So this, okay. one, this one does that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, so I heard Kathy speak. Is there anybody else on the call who thinks there's something that's higher priority? Otherwise, we're going to keep heading down this path. Okay, not hearing anything. Uh, go ahead and let me know where you want me to scroll to, Clemens, I assume. Uh, this is fine. Okay. Um, can, can we get a raw view of this? A web view? Oh, raw. You mean of the... The, 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 the complete view of it without the changes. You mean the, the new one? Mm-hmm, the new okay. one. Okay, whoops. Clement, before, uh, can I make a suggestion? Before we dive, you dive into details of, you know, on this, can you first give a, like, a high level of, you know, the, uh, maybe you have a hierarchy, you know, um, relationship between these uh, terminologies. I, I don't know, just give us a, a idea of what you have in mind, well, high level, and then we can dive into detail of each, uh, each field. Yeah, so that's why I actually pointed yesterday at the end of the call, to um, issue 117, I think, or one, what is it called, 112, um, which is a five-pager um, that, that discusses all this. So I'm going to give you the short version of it. Okay, that's good, yeah. Um, so there's a ration, so the rationale for, for introducing topic and subject is really anchored in um, the reality of the middleware landscape as it, as it exists. Um, uh, more than more than my own uh, more, more than my own creativity. So I'm just I'm just standing on the shoulder of a whole group of giants here, um, who have been figuring this out for a long time ago. And um, so I'm basically just I'm I'm reintroducing that concept into um, our space here. That um, where that is also already been heavily used for event distribution. So topic. Um, so it's a two-stage it's a two-stage model, and that is very common. Um, as I uh, explain in that issue, um, there is ample precedent in existing infrastructures for having um, both variations of both of those fields that are always called that. But there's typically this two-stage classification. So from a higher level perspective, the topic is a um, a convention that that ultimately, from if you look at it from really high up, it's a convention that um, the producer and the consumer arrive at um, for classifying events uh, or classifying messages, so that the consumer has a reasonable way to go and select those messages. So I have a few examples here um, that I show in the topic section. So let's go and pick, um, so the, the US city um, example, I actually picked right out of the IBM MQ specification um, where the, and, or actually IBM MQ documentation for, the, uh, for topics and topic trees, um, where you have um, 
Um, it, and you can go in and read this, and I can probably go and also give footnotes if anybody's interested. Um, but that kind of gives a, a topology, a, a classification of events based on U.S. Um, cities, and they're grouped by country, state, and city. Then you have a machine component above that. That's something that you would find not necessarily in this nice format. It's a little bit more convoluted um, in OPC UA, uh, which is an automation standard, where you have um, a robot. The robot has a number of drives. The third drive, um, of the third drive, you want to know the temperature. So you have a logical path um, into um, that robot towards that drive. Um, then you might have a resource path and it's just, just very generic. That's what, what most of the services that we run and, and most other people have. Uh, there's a graph of resources that exist and you, drive, you have a path through that resource graph. That's the top, the top example um, that you're mapping and you are expressing as a consumer, you express an interest as, uh, for um, events or messages related to that particular resource path. And then um, we can go through and, you know, for all of these, for all of these examples, the, 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 the theme is the same. There's some kind of a resource graph. Sometimes it's a tree. Sometimes it's a little more, uh, sometimes it's more complicated, but you typically, cutting a path through this, and this is how you are um, finding your, your resources or subjects, um, and you are registering interest in stuff that comes out of those uh, contexts. Sometimes that context is a little bit larger. So I'm interested in, for instance, everything that that robot gives me. Um, sometimes that is a little bit narrower. Like I wanna have everything that drive three uh, emits from that robo robot example. Um, sometimes it's even more narrow, and I want to have a particular the, part the particular temperature reading only from that robot. So the topic the topic is a, in in the first place a convention that is being agreed upon, if you will, by producers, by a producer population and a consumer population. Um, it sometimes will precisely define the originator. But in more cases, it will define a more abstract concept like a, um, um, like a categorization. And even in the case of what I just showed here, the robot, the, the drive you're interested in, in the temperature you're interested in of that drive, you don't actually mean the drive per se. Yeah? Like you don't care about that thing with the serial number. But if an, a technician goes, goes there and exchanges the drive, which means the physical part, um, and puts another physical part in there, you will now still care about the drive as an abstract thing um, that you're watching, um, rather than you know, the thing with the serial number. So it's a, bit, it's a higher level abstraction model, typically, than, than having a concrete center that you care about. The reason why this topic concept is so successful everywhere is that it provides that level of abstraction that everybody can go and map their 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 various contexts to. So you send um, you send messages that are belonging to a topic um, into an infrastructure, and that infrastructure will allow then others subscribers to go and pick messages for that topic. Now, topic is still a fairly coarse gr coarse grained grouping. So if you want to then further distinguish messages um, or events that are coming out of that topic, which means, let's say, you want to have all the events that are occurring um, in the lighting system, um, in the street light system of uh, Juneau in Alaska, um, then you will probably want to be a little bit more informed and, and filter a little bit more um, what sort of, what, what kind of event you're looking at, and that's what the subject is for. The subject, the topic is the thing you can go and subscribe on. You say, I'm interested in events from this topic. The subject is the thing you will then further filter on or that will describe what this particular instance of event is about. So the topic is the coarse, gr coarse grain um, thing that you subscribe for and then the subject tells you what this particular event is about. 
that's what those two fields are. And they, they completely replace um, the, the prior notion. So topic is effectively a broader definition of what we previously had as source and then subject kind of collapses onto each other the notion of subject of subject type and sort the subject ID, whereby I have um, still not understood what the subject ID stood for. Any questions? Yeah, if I'm understanding um, properly the rob the robot <clears throat> drive case, um, you're suggesting that the temperature it depending on how the user wants to model this, the the topic could actually end with drives three and then temperature yeah. could actually be the subject. Absolutely. Is there any um, guideline to how to make that distinction or based on usage? Um, yeah, so so I, I can give you a little bit of examples of those things. So the, the, the typical way how you would do this in, um, in OPC UA, for instance, which has a pops up infrastructure that we just added, um, uh, which is where I can kind of give you the exact, the exact model. Um, OPC UA creates a graph um, over a um, composite machine. So it would actually look like this, where you have a robot, but the robot then has an ID, et cetera, um, that may have a collection of drives. Um, the, collection of dri the collection is then, the collection of drives is obviously a little bit more um, you know, specific than what I have here. Um, and each drive has an identifier that's logical for effectively the slot where that sits. And you would put a, uh, an observer um, onto that drive, and then the observer will go and collect um, the information items you're interested in from that drive, and so you would compose a message, and that message would then contain all the items that you have. So your topic would be the drive in that case, because you're particularly interested in stuff that comes out of that drive, and then you would have a, um, uh, a message that comes out of that that then carries uh, you know, temperature and uh, and vibration and, and all those things. So the temperature might actually just be in the payload in that case. It, it seems like this gets into middleware uh, specific issues as well, though, for cases where you can actually subscribe with wildcards on a hierarchical topic. Yeah, and, and I think that Matt, that actually, um, that fits the case. So, so let's see, the topic concept exists in um, Kafka, it exists in Azure Event Hubs, it exists in, in EventGrid, it exists in Apache ActiveMQ, it exists in RabbitMQ, it exists in IBM MQ, it exists in Mosquito, it exists in um, IVMQ, it exists, I like, basically you can go through every pops up broker, whether they're event oriented or whether they're message oriented, where I count, for instance, the MQTT brokers as event oriented. And every single one of them has at least the topic concept. Then there's the, 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 second, the second question is how common is the subject concept? The subject concept is also, and I have that in the, in the, in the issue that I filed. Um, I, have a, I have a bit of a survey. Uh, we can, um, can you pull that up? Pull it up. Um, I have an issue, an issue that's called goals and et cetera, and kind of very to the bottom of that, I have a list. Um, actually, I have a question on this topic. I see, I think in the messaging uh, event source, it's, it's, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, sorry. Okay, yeah, it is, yeah, it's there. But how about like for some other type of event source, like for example, storage? Yeah, hang on, Let, let's, let's, let's get to that. So go, go to the very bottom. It's a doozy. Okay. Yes, there we go. Yeah, it's long. Um, so, so here's, I actually went and uh, so this entire write up is about almost nothing but topic and subject. And that's why I wrote it um, to, to, clar to clarify um, what I mean. And also, um, but I, I felt it was a little long to put in, in along with that pull request. It also predates the pull request. So SNS as a subject. GCM has a title, FCM has a title, but they're effectively the same thing, functionally. Um, Kafka doesn't have a subject as a second level, a second order field because it, Kafka is, gives you effectively zero indication about the messages um, outside of the partition ID, and that's a design choice that they made. Um, GMS has custom properties um, in, 
instead of a standardized subject field. Um, IBM MQ um, has um, also custom properties um, instead of a standard subject field. The IBM MQ AMQP binding obviously supports AMQP, the MQP subject field. Um, and MQDT um, also has no subject field per se, but also they add custom properties um, in MQTT5. So whether there's a subject field or not um, is kind of the, 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 the messaging community is split on that, but they're not split on um, with MQTT being effectively the last straggler is having a custom property set that you can um, then dispatch on the only outlier and that is Kafka. Would it, would it be horrible if we went with just topic for now and then save the discussion of subject later? Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I still feel we're, um, I mean, this topic and um, this um, terminology is very, uh, it's very geared towards uh, a messaging uh, event source. Eventing, other eventing, event eventing source. is messaging. What, what, what is messaging? What is eventing if it's not messaging? Like for example, if like you know, for uh, like give an example of S three, like AWS S three or Huawei's OBS, right? It's a storage. That's you already have. You know, it doesn't have col doesn't have you know topic. It has column. Which column? You know, it shows which column. You know, uh, a file is saved or is uh is right. changed. So it's like a bucket. Yeah, um, but the way the way how you get, how the way how you get at storage events in AWS is you either get them from S through SNS or you get them through um, um, the, what's it called? Cloud Trace, not Cloud Trace. CloudWatch. Yeah, CloudWatch, I always forget their names. <laughs> um, Their stuff, their stuff is always named so complicated and I can never never remember the container stuff. Um, so, so you always get at those events through a messaging system. Uh, not necessary, actually, you know, um, because sometimes, you know, the event uh, consumer get that event directly from the storage. It doesn't yeah, need to go through a messaging system. It so just how, how do you get that? So how do you get an event like this from, from storage? You know, you just register, you know, if there's a change, right? It, you know. Um, yeah, and then you have, and all of a sudden now you have a pops up, you have a pops up middleware, maybe hidden, a, but it pops up. Okay, so sometimes it's like there's a uh, there's a push or pull model. You just pull it, and then you get those information. Then the 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 thing that you are interested in for our storage is a bucket. So, um, so I have that action. So, you know, so, it's a create. so thankfully, so mm -hmm. thankfully, I actually went and and did that exact case. So go back to that to that to the issue. Go upstairs. Because, so can, yeah, no, yeah, can Mark, get, Mark, Mark's like sharing his screen. Ah, I pasted you the link. And just I'm let you guys know, I, I actually have to drop in a sec. So Mark's going to continue sharing and, and sort of moderating the meeting. Like if, if possible, um, when the meeting's over, can someone write into the agenda doc um, the minutes from today and where you guys left off so people can understand what was discussed? Okay, thank you guys very much. I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow, but I need to drop right now. Okay. Bye. Bye. My my concern is I'm not sure whether you know we use topic and subject. Um, you let know. Me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you. I have an example. Mm -hmm. I have an example. Go go up go go up a little bit in that document. Further up. Further up. Further up. Okay. So this is an event as we have it in our, um, is an alert, right? So this is an application insights app, um, um, application inserts operational alert. This has nothing to do with the messaging system, right? Um, it's, it's giving you an alarm um, because the disk read was less than, um, so it's a, it's, it, it's a slow disk. So what I'm doing in this example, I'm effectively evolving this into a compliant cloud events event. Um, so if you just scroll scroll down, I, I, I do this stepwise, so I can go in and tell you all the steps. Um, so first, I'm taking that that event and I'm sticking that into a um, I'm sticking it into a container. If you can make this a little bit bigger, OK. 
Okay. So now I'm effectively taking the event that I got and put that into the data field of that event. That's the first step that I do. The second step is I'm now saying what that event that I just put into that container is. I put the content type, which is, is JSON. I'm going to give you the schema URL, which points to the schema, to the our actual schema for that event. So these are the first two steps. Then I go and give it an event ID. That's the, the literal event ID that I'm just pulling up from that event. So it's, I'm using the event ID as the event gave it to me. And I also pull out the event time. The next, the event has a type and I explain what that, what the type is. Effectively, um, every event, so this is a, a second discriminator that I really don't want, don't want to talk about at, at this moment, um, but that tells you effectively what, what kind of event that is within um, the topic. So let's scroll up, let's skip this. And then now I'm picking, now I'm picking a topic and picking a topic basically here means that I'm now picking from a few candidates, right? What I think what the right resource type is and I'll make a discussion. So for your storage, for your storage problem, right? The right topic really is the storage account and in that storage account, a folder. So we would model, so in our world, we would model this as subscriptions, GUID, resource groups, my resource group, provider, storage, uh, account name, slash folder. So that would be kind of the topic name for, for a storage account because we have a, a, a global resource graph in Microsoft and the global in, and in Azure and that global resource graph, you can go and, and, and cut a path right to a storage account and a folder in that storage account. And that's what that would be. And that's kind of what I lay out here. So here in, in specifically, I pick the, the fully qualified path to the specific resource. That's how I pick the topic. So the topic is what, you, what, you're, what you're interested in, right, in a coarse grained fashion. So this could be a storage account, it could be a VM, it could be like all, all of our 200 services that we have in Azure, every single one of them, has a res is mapped into this resource graph, and you basically pick a pick a place in that resource graph that can go in the mid event. That is the model that we have. And then further down, um, there's then a notion of a um, um, I'm, I'm mapping in the the subject because I need to know, um, for instance in that context, exactly what is that event about? So here in this case, um, and I wrote this down, the alert, I'm, I'm subscribing for alerts from a particular VM, but, or sorry, I'm actually uh, from, a, um, from a VM uh, slot, a runtime slot for a classic compute ins instance. But I'm now getting an event that is about that resource and the subject is telling me exactly what machine in what slot is actually causing that alarm. So I'm interested in general in all the events that are flowing out of the, the, um, the VM host, uh, but the event host is composed of multiple slots um, in which may be multiple roles. And so I wanna catch all of those. And so I'm getting the information about which exact slot and which exact role this is about in the subject field. That's the mapping that I did for something that has nothing to do with an eventing system, but really is a real um, example. And then if you scroll down, I did the same thing for AWS CloudTrail, right? Where I did, I take a CloudTrail event as it is, and then did this containment mapping thing here as well. Um, in fact, the same, same principle. So I took a, um, and, I, and I use this, you, I don't use, I substitute source for topic. I literally use the to source term as the, for, the top, for the topic field. So here, the topic is, um, so this is about uh, EC2. Uh, it's about EC2, a Amazon AWS, US EC2, and that's my EC2 um, slot. The subject is the, in, the particular instance. Um, it's the event type is stop instances, so the instances got stopped, so that's easy. I can understand that without having to parse anything extra. Um, and so that's how that maps. And then I took from Software AG, uh, from Comelocity, from an IoT platform, um, a simple event, and that's the door sensor was triggered and mapped that in the exact same way. And again, I have the source. The source here is much simpler. 
um, in the scope of the system because it's literally just a, a, an object. That's what, what they have. They have named and numbered objects in the scope of their system. So that's what the topic would be. The event type is the, sen the, the door sensor event. And so I don't even need to have a subject in this case. So the subject is something that's optional. So I, I map this all out um, because that's just how uh, messaging systems use those fields. So subject is something that you sometimes need and sometimes don't because you sometimes need to have a further qualification that you can go and dispatch on. Um, in some instances where this, the context is smaller, you don't. In instances where the context is larger, you do. Um, and topic is the general model for how you map the resource graph effectively, um, or the, the, the topic graph in, in general, a graph that you are interested in um, subscribing onto. So I think my biggest question is, you, 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 you talked early on about having, let's see if I can find it. So being able to pick a topic you discussed here. Yeah. And then when you when you were talking about the AWS use case, you said that the topic was just the source here, right? And so how, how do you see the, as, as you're talking about wanting a topic attribute, how do you see that actually mapping are you just changing the name? I mean, where you have source there, are you really saying we should be using the term, the, the, the uh, keyword topic? Yeah, so this is, um, well, we actually, we, so I, and not only did I change the name, I also changed the definition. So I've you've been using source here because this, this, this uh, issue predates my PR for um, changing the name to topic. That's the only reason because I wanted to refer to a term in the spec, right? And that's why, but, but I think, so source doesn't make sense to me as a term because in, in current, in, in, in contemporary pub sub usage, as well as uh, most of the eventing system that I've been confronted with, the real source plays much of a role than the context you care about. Mm. Well, if you, if the, the, the messaging protocol, like for instance, AMQP as a messaging protocol um, has no notion of from, and with good reason, because the problem is that data, where data comes from, turns out to be enormously complicated. Um, typically applications, there's an application, at the application layer above that, um, you have a fairly complica complicated notion of data provenance with, because that is, if you build sophisticated systems, um, because that includes the, the identity under which the process runs. It might include the person who was operating that terminal. Uh, it might include someone who gave permi second permission for that particular operation. I mean, it's, it, provenance is really, really complicated and that's why um, most of the generic infrastructure folks just punt on that problem and just and punt that up to the app. Hey, Clemens, can I ask a clarifying question? Because I think um, if I understand this, I actually really like the distinction here. Um, so the idea, if I had a really, like I'm going to create a really simple metaphor here. Like if I have to deliver a letter to you and I can't reach you, so I'm going to hand it to Mark and Mark is going to hand it to Kathy and Kathy is going to hand it to you. Ultimately, the topic of that letter has never changed. But what presents some source of confusion is the source field, because the source field when Clemens receives the message is Kathy, though actually there's a chain of sources along the way, which That's actually correct. have nothing to do with the, the content or metadata related to the, you know, the message being the envelope that to be delivered to Clevins. Yeah. So the idea of a topic here ultimately is a, and to me, a much more uh, clear statement of as a consumer, you know, you are receiving some amount of information. You don't care how it got to you, right? You really care about the topic of what it is, what what's it describes. Is that kind of what you're going for here? That is, that is exactly what it is. So if you are care, so, so what you, 
you always need to look at this from the consumer perspective. You're, if you're interested in football results, right, you, as a real-time delivered event-driven thing, you never care about who typed in the football results, like at all. What you care about is the football results, which means you will be interested in um, a league and you may be interested in a team and, and then you may be interested in a game, but how that data was captured and how that data was put into the system, you don't care. And that's something that is, doesn't matter. And most use cases, most real use cases that we see are just like that, where this actual sender of events matters very little, but the context from which those events were sent or on, on whose behalf that those events were sent is what matters. And that's typically directly reflected in the topic. So if we can go and switch back to the, uh, to the actual PR, that would be helpful. Yeah, so I think that's the so PR. I actually, um, to take that, I actually really like this distinction quite a bit. Um, my question for you actually, in some of the examples you've listed, like we have like robots slash drive. Um, yeah. I think what you're, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is robot an identifier? Because I, so I have a little bit of yeah. a confusion here, right? Like USA, Alaska, Juno is very clearly country, state, city, right? Like it's yeah. very US specific. Like that wouldn't work for something like Japan, right? Yeah. Or it'd be like country, prefecture, right? Like something along those lines. Yeah. Um, so really what you have here is it's robots slash robot ID slash drives, right? Slash. Yeah, correct. Right, slash temperature, right? So that's, that's where my, I had a little bit of confusion in here where, you know, if I were thinking about Kathy's example, which is, let's say like a, you know, I, I put an object into an S3 bucket. Mm -hmm. um, really what that looks like is slash namespace slash namespace ID slash bucket slash bucket ID slash objects and maybe the subject is the file path of the yes you got it you, you, you're you're exactly right so and that's the distinction so that's the distinction that is re that really matters here sure so what, the only thing i'd ask is maybe to clarify a little bit like as a consumer if i care about all of the events related to robot with robot id i'm gonna just um basically match on anything that slash robots slash robot id slash yes. star right yeah i'm, um, I'm gonna clarify that but that's, what, that's the only thing I was going to say. Can you so, clarify so where there are identifiers versus like URI, like generic URI segments? Yeah. I'll clarify that. Stanley, when, when you stated that, you, you commented that the namespace should be part of the topic. Did you, was that a yeah, nuance yeah, that exactly. I picked up on? Okay. Like the more logical. So whether the like the actual literal namespace right that indicates like if i were to go look at you know i want to go uh hit a describe api for slash namespaces slash namespace id right i think that's what clements is trying to say these are like pr not not generic or these are not abstract uris these are actually concrete uris um it, yes they so there will be well, they can be whatever you like. Or they can be whatever you want. In this one, I'm, I'm, I'm composing a, a concrete URI for my example. Correct, yes. And, and that's what you would typically do. So you would typically go and, and have in a, so as, as they say in patent speak, in an embodiment of this, um, you will have a, um, some kind of a structured identifier, um, a URI, um, that will, this is why I think, did I write this in here? I think I, um, it should be a URI and I, and I write this should be a URI specifically because I'm keen on having the, the structure, the structuring qualities of URI um, in here. And so, and it could be a relative or absolute URI, but I want to have the, the, uh, the structure qualities of URIs in here. So you will have a, you have, will have some, the, the event will be about some context this, the context can typically be expressed in um, some form of graph um, or being a location in some graph. And that's true for all the things that are listed in here and, and the example that, you, that you just uh, listed because the bucket clearly is part of the resource graph of AWS. And then you can go and formulate a path through that graph that, hit, that leads you to that particular bucket. 
inf so all the in all the existing eventing infrastructure that you, that you will find, or most existing eventing infrastructure that you will find, effectively all the um, everybody who built something on an off-the-shelf open source message message broker or on top of Kafka will find a concept that maps to this, where you have you pick a topic string, topic string the topic string um, originates from a context uh, in your application and typically based on some kind of a, um, you know, object that is in your context path. And that's what you're choosing. And then you have inside of that context that you're choosing, which may be bigger or, or smaller, you're going to have another URI potentially, a subpath, if you will, that then pinpoints the, the thing that the event is about. And that's how the split is between topic and subject. You will be interested in all the events that are coming out of that bucket. You want to learn about all the files that have just been created because you want to go and instantly download the JPEGs and you want to go and then turn them into thumbnails. So that's one of the, our canonical examples, right? You, you're looking at a bucket and now you want to be informed as soon as an object is created. Um, and then you need to learn what that path is of that object. And that's what the subject is. And the reason why you need help from the middleware of this is that bucket may be large and you may be getting hundreds of requests, but you're really only interested in the ones that have the suffix .jpg. And to do this, you need to give the middleware a generic hint on what to look for. And the subject field is one that you can do a uh, longest prefix match on, or you can go and do a suffix match on, and you can do all kinds of matching on. Um, and that's why the subject field as one of, as effectively as a promoted as, as a field that holds data that's promoted from the event um, is super useful. So this is purely for the benefit of the middleware to uh, enable filtering um, on, um, a, um, uh, on a portion of the contents of the event. So Clement, so um, so if I understand you correctly, so you are so this topic and subject is for the to assist the communication between the subscriber and the uh, no between the what's that producer uh, event producer and the event consumer for for the um, consumer to get the needed information, right? Is that for that purpose? Yeah. So it's for it's for the consumer to be able to pick a subset of the events that they're interested in. Okay, so, right. so you are not asking the existing event source to change their name or, or to add a new field in their event record, you know, add a new topic field or subject field in their record. What, what the, pu okay. the publisher, the producer will um, effectively report, they, they will, so think of it as a rendezvous model, right? where you have some place that sits in the middle between, between the producer and the consumer um, that is, and that could also be a piece that lives with the producer um, where um, you have the ability to go in and send, send messages to a path and then, and that, that's what the topic really is. And then you can go and subscribe, you can subscribe to um, on that path, and you can either subscribe to something that's further down in the path and you get fewer messages, or you can go and subscribe to the roots of that path and you get all the messages. Okay, so basically, so for the, from the producer, the producer, the event producer itself does not need to change any of its, like record, uh, any of its no. event uh, form, I mean, format to add a topic field. You're not suggesting that, right? No, what what you saw in the example, what you saw in the example that I that I that I that I gave, that's in the item, mm -hmm. is the process that I'm suggesting even for people who to adopt cloud events, is containment, that you don't change any of your of your existing data structures at all, but you take the existing data records as you have them, you stuff them into the data field, of a cloud event wrapper. And then you take the cloud, and then you take fields from your existing event and just and promote them out into the cloud event wrapper. That's exactly the process that I've been been doing. So if you look, if 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 you look at an example again, so look at the here, here it is. So if you scroll up once, right? This is the original AWS event. Uh, if you scroll down, that exact AWS event is verbatim con contained in the data field, unchanged. 
So all code that depends on the structure of that event will continue to work. And all I did is I took select fields, select data out of that data field and promoted it up into the event in, into the cloud event structure. So the that source field, how do you how do you compose that from the um, original uh, content? Yeah. Now how I'm asking how do you actually compose that? So I took I took the I took the um, um, here the uh, um, um, the event source um, with the data center. Can and, we just say? Can we uh, use the term topic instead? Yeah, yeah. Let's. Yeah, exactly. So it's the topic. So mm -hmm. what I took I took from the from the data, and this data is obviously just a, a log record from from um, uh, from AWS. I took the their generic field event source which is um, the EC2 system. So it's not really the source, it's like the system level. EC2, I took the data center and then took the account ID and that made a, um, a reasonably, um, an identifier that I think if I was designing that at AWS um, and map that into a, an event flow, that's how I would design that. I would say um, subscribe on, on EC2 um, on this data center and in the data center on this particular um, uh, instance slot. Uh, actually, I'm not sure whether that's actually true for that particular uh, for CloudTrail, but um, I think what might be useful is if you could set up a set of examples that you know take say AWS S3 records, you know Azure records, just a set of different ex sources uh, and compose these headers that you show here as examples. I know you've done a couple of them, but I think it would be useful if you actually use the term topic and subject that you have here and um, you know, add, add a few more examples so people can kind of get a uh, better so appreciation of what you're uh, proposing here. What, what I'm what I'm a little worried about is that so far, even though this document has been around for three weeks, nobody has looked at it apparently. Right. Uh, I, I think that that probably shows you know um, because now we are have a very generic um, way of you know like topic subject right. So I'm so when you send for example for, as a consumer, if I send uh, 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 I mean a request say I need this topic and subject. Well, that event that uh, producer knows what that mean what so so how, how could I say okay if I need this information I'm interested in a topic uh, uh, or a subject um, then the consumer need to understand what you know yes. when I send that mean what that mean right so that need to be well defined otherwise because there are so many different scenarios um, I'm just thinking you know um, how we can ensure you know people like to use this and then to be compliant with this so we can really so, use so, so I'm I'm so the problem I'm so the problem I'm trying to um I'm facing is that there is a body of um of work that has been done in the messaging field realized in uh, countless products that are have all converged on this notion. Um and I'm I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time co basically communicating the industry consensus in the messaging and eventing space that already exists um, on the particular top subject of of having a topic um, with an amount of examples. I, I think um, of course, because because the, the, the because the reality is that. What we're doing in the messaging space as we're building that infrastructure is that we don't take a stance on what the structure of these topics ought to be because we intentionally leave that up to the application to go and decide how it wants to go and structure those things. And that turns out that turns out to be to be beneficial. So I actually intentionally don't want to be prescriptive about how that ought to be looking um, because I'm not sure that helps. So the example that I gave with the so so all the examples for azure for instance will look pretty much exactly alike um the, the one that i gave you that that i've worked out and I spe specifically didn't take an event that originates from my org um will look exactly the same across all of the same all of the services because we have a universal graph 
um, across the entire platform where we can identify effectively each context. And so the natural topic path for, that we're using is the re effectively the resource ID um, for, um, for that resource. So I can give you a hundred examples, but they will all look the same. So, so, so okay, maybe uh, I think my question is, okay, for example, if I'm interested in, in something, how should I feel the topic? And so that yeah, the so user knows, oh, okay, you feel a terminology, for example, some topic X, and the, and the producer knows what X means, and then All right. the give, me a problem. give me a problem, and I'll tell you. Well, actually, I like the idea. I think this was the request. Um, so you've done a really awesome job, Clemens, kind of pulling a bunch of different examples in. Let's take, like, one thing. Like, let's say, like, doing a put object to S3, Azure object storage, like Oracle object storage, any of the object storages across all the clouds, right? Like yeah. to Firebase even, and just do the, the mapping of that one specific use case and show how the topic and subject so would I have, work I have, for that. I actually have one in the, um, if you go to, um, if you go to the um, issues, I have one. Sure, and I apologize, I haven't read this. Um, yeah, not, not, not go, don't go to this, get to the issues list. And there's an HTTP mapping straw man. Yeah. Because that actually has one in there. 93. Okay. The um, unfortunately, one. I have to drop off um, for a 10 a.m., but I, yeah. I oh, actually I really love the topic subject uh, consolidation. Um, yeah. I would vote in favor of I, this. I think this is great. I, I, I need to drop a 10 as well. Uh, I'd yeah. say if there's some way that we could conceptualize, you know, this discussion, be able to, to have like a short presentation tomorrow on the call to discuss here's our, our thinking on this and here's why we think it's the right direction. Uh, that would that would be awesome. I don't I can, know, Clemens, I can, is that something that you, you could pull together? Yeah, I can I can do that. Okay. Yeah. And and so um, uh, here and I'm actually gonna adjust because I can go and edit things. Um, I'm gonna go and adjust because this is also predates my PR. I'm going to edit this issue. I'm going to edit the other ones to go and make a topic. And then, um, but I would uh, strongly encourage people to go and just write, read the, the, the bigger issue. That's still at the top of the list. And I wrote, there's a lot of write up and there's a lot of industry context in there um, with, uh, you know, quotes from existing system or, or, or links out actually to existing systems. Um, there's resource collections. In fact, it shows you how IBM IoT does it, how Microsoft IoT does it, how AWS IoT does it. And basically to illustrate that there's industry consensus around the, the around those concepts. So I didn't invent those. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, have a um, like two or three slides um, tomorrow to nail down that concept, probably with uh, three three to four pictures, um, as, as they help. Yeah, that would be good. So well, if you can give examples, say you know for like just give you know, use S3 as, as an example. If I need some information, how how should I, how should the produce, I mean, the yeah. consumer feel that topic and subject, how will the uh, producer understand that? Do we need to define some something there, further define something there, or it's just by, def I don't yeah. know. Okay. I'm just, gonna, I'm gonna thanks give you everyone, I unfortunately have to storage storage over. But uh, this, was, this was really great, thanks everyone. <laughs> all right, yes. I gotta Thanks all. Right. Uh, Clemens, um, yes. are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, so I have a, um, a further question uh, on this. Yeah, it's good, it's good presentation. Um, so for, for the issue, the correlation, um, correlation ID, right? Correlation token. Yeah. So how, for example, if I, I'm interested in something, for example, for I3, I'm interested in the uh, uh, information saved in, in which column of that uh, storage, right? That's what I'm interested in. So that I yeah. can you know, the topic and, and the subject, right? We can go into a, another level of detail in that column, which file specific I'm interested. Correct. But then in addition to that, I would like to know, like I mentioned before, if there are multiple event sources, one is you know storage, but the other could be another event source, could be um could be another, like for example, um some let me think about it, some notification, you know event okay it's not a storage okay another notification event but these two events might might be you know all about um use a burglary system okay from the same house yes. i would like to know there are so many houses sending me all this information right i would like to know okay which you know which storage event 
is uh, and uh, which you know the uh, uh, for instance uh, simple messaging event. These two events are coming from associated with the same house. How could I get that information? I think we need a correlation token there. You know, so, have a, so, so I can give you I can give you an example, some, some real examples for, for that from <laughs> some systems that we have built um, and, and how this is how this is working. Um, I'll give you an example from um, I'll give you an example from Halo from the game, uh, the Xbox game. I, do you know that? Okay. Um, no, I, I do not know that the game. Okay. Do you play online games? Okay, <laughs> not much. Okay. okay, good. So, so, um, um, so those problems happen quite a bit that you need to go and correlate events that are happening from different places at the same time. Yeah, well, well, the, different time. That's fine. Yeah, I, we need to correlate those events. Yeah. Yes. So the biggest the biggest problem is that you often can't tell the producer that the context in which they, the events are being fired. So having, having the producer go and do and give you the correlation information is often not helpful. Um, rather than, than doing that, what typically it happens is that people use um, a, some, some middleware uh, to go and create that correlation. That happens in middleware systems, like sometimes you do this with, with stream analytics, where you have temporal correlation, which means you take multiple events and, and map them on top of each other um, because they're temporally related and you only want to have a view uh, over um, the, the temporal stream. So you use a stream analytic system for this. Um, sometimes you have the problem that you have multiple events from different places that need to come into one place and, with, and you go and, and seek for them separately um, through from with subscriptions from different systems and then you concentrate them in something like an actor system where the actor acts on behalf of the context that you, that you care about so you have a, a house or something um, or a room in a house and then you have an actor that that um, um, acts on behalf of that the, the thing that happens in the industry right now um, is the concept of, in, uh, uh, of uh, the digital twin and digital twins are basically these these um, these objects which are standing in for any arbitrary context, and often they they are ref reflective of factory floors or particular machines. And most of what they do is basically they go and concentrate events from from certain sources. They typically will not do that though, based on a single identifier that everybody knows, but they rather will do this from. From, um, different, from different information because also those, many of those events are also emitted from you know, legacy systems that don't know about any of those things. So, so setting a, a correlation field per se that all the producers need to go and set is something that I don't see as common enough uh, in, in factual usage that I would put that into the standard, but it's obviously easy for you. Like if you say that's the way we want to go, it's obviously easy for you to put, you know, a, a, a correlation ID into every Huawei event, which flows in through the uh, cloud event uh, uh, infrastructure. Don't you really have something like that? Uh, I see you've got a thing called a resource group and, and you talk about it's a scoping construct that would, uh, you know, uh, fence or group up a number yes. of different resources that belong to a specific solution. Doesn't yep. that really be what you're at? We're, we're talking about here. We're really saying we want these resources to be identified as a yeah. group. Right? And, so, and that would map that in that case, that would then map to the topic concept. Yeah. So, so uh, no, okay. So you just mentioned, I agree with you that the correlation uh, ask every event producer to add a correlation ID there. It's not, uh, we can, that's one way of doing it, but might not, you know, every pro event producer would like to do that, right? Okay, so I think, you know, that's, of course, if, you know, the event source can put a correlation ID there, that's good. Okay, that's, I agree with you, that's one way doing, but might not be, you know, everyone will follow that. Another way is, I think, you know, in the event, um, so the, Eventually, for example, for, for that burglary system, right? I assume that the, the motion detector and the door open detector, when the information is sent out, there will be some 
uh, like how not house a, a house number something you know a unique identifier for that house there will be a information inside yes. interested inside those event message uh, you know just different vendors for example the sensor different sensor vendors and different uh, you know um, video camera vendors they might put into you know different places we cannot force them to say you have to put you know this id what it's called or, or where you should put it it's hard to force everyone but they must be there so if we can have you know in the um, i'm thinking you know if we can define a way to you know we we do not know where it is put right but the but the producer knows for example they if yes. they put a house number or a high ip address to identify that house, okay, whatever, whatever that thing, they know where they put it, right? Because their equipment put that. But if they let us know where they put it, so there is uh, that information we can, you know, put into the spec. Say, uh, okay, so I have a proposal for you. That information. Uh -huh. so I have a proposal for you because I think that pro that problem that you're just illustrating um, is um, is actually solvable within the scope of what we discussed today. Because because you just talked about because you just you just you just actually led with the fact that there's a that there's a structure, so there is yeah. houses right. there's buildings you care about, and each house has an, has an, has a unique ID. So yeah. let's say you have you have country organizations, each country organization issues house IDs. Right. right? And um, so, and in these houses, interesting stuff that you're interested in. So you're making a topic in your infrastructure, in the Huawei infrastructure that is that that has a number slash a topic that is called slash de slash one, which is my house. Yeah. Okay. And all the all the all the objects that are sitting in my house that are talking with your system will now publish their events to that topic slash de slash one, which now gives you a perfect place where you can go and pick up all those events because you only need to go and subscribe to slash de slash one and you're getting all the events from my house. And then you can, in the subject, is then the identifier of the actual sensor that gives you the information. Yeah, okay. And that's okay. what, that's what, so that's how that solves your problem. Your problem is solved by creating a, 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 a broad scope that you can go and subscribe on and it would not be as simple as it would likely not be as simple as slash de slash id but something that's a little bit more sophisticated yeah yeah yeah. So, so I, I would, yeah 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 i think we are along the same you know thought thread so i, I think you know um so we would like um say but the thing is that when i when i um so actually uh it's not like you know on the produce the consumer will send a message to the to the producer say, okay, give me this information. I would like to say, okay, let the consume, uh, let the producer fill in information of that past, say, okay, what is, you know, the correlation token, where my, you know, the house number is located. So when I receive that message, right, uh, that, that event data, I can just go directly to search, you know, inside that big chunk of, you know, event data plus its metadata. I can just, you know, based on that, I can just, extract that information for example if it's a say okay uh it's a it's a house number okay that's a that's a house number is a unique so i can just search, search you know uh house address i can just search, search house address and then i get the value of course the value could be you know clement's house address could be uh, you know louis house address or kathy's house address the value varies but i know what string i need to search i just search you know house address oh that's unique and then for another use case it could be you know um i don't know <laughs> oh some like for travel request id so i search travel request id of course the value could all be different right different people yes. have to make different travel requests but at least you know the producer should give me you know because he knows, the producer knows, right? The producer put that, you know, that value, that unique correlation token value inside the event data. So he knows what is not. But that's, uh, that's, what I'm, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to telegraph to you. So yeah. the, 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 you have a graph that represents all the buildings that you care about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all that, so you have, you, have, you have, let's say you have countries mm -hmm. and you have, in those countries, you have building IDs. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are now interested in your solution from 
all events em emitted from one building and you want to have them in real time. Right. That's, that's what this is about here, that, right? It's about getting at that information real fast um, and being able to get some targeted messages towards you, right? Just as a, just as a, as a reference number, uh, we currently do 1.5 trillion messages a day. Right. Uh, just, in current, just in terms of events. So you ha have to be able to get to get to a few events very specifically. So you need to be able to filter on them. What you're That's looking right. for here, so what you're looking for here is a bit is the ability for 20 sensors, which are in one house. Exactly. To and to be correlated together. Exactly. So you, you can get the events for all of those 20 with effectively from one pipe, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what the topic model. So the topic model allows you to do this, because all of your all of your resources exist on a graph. The graph has the first level, and our graph that we're just talking about has two levels. First level of the graph is countries. The second level of the graph is identifiers for individual houses. So you step up, and if you are interested in your system on events that are coming from my house specifically, you walk up to the topic and you say. I'm interested in everything that comes out of Clemens House slash DE slash one. And that will give you, and that will give you all the events for all the devices. What you need to do on the producer side, which means in the devices, you need to go and configure them to say, you're going to publish all of your events on this topic, so which means you are sending to slash DE slash one. And once they all do this, then you have that correlation automatically. Mm. So, so when I send that um, message from the, okay, the top pick, okay, uh, do I need to specify? So you say, as a consumer, the consumer should know what is the correlation key. The, the, the consumer knows, the consumer knows the context it's interested in. It knows that it wants events from that house. It doesn't. It, in the first level, it actually doesn't even care what devices are in that house. It just knows that it needs to observe everything that's okay. in that house that wants to talk to it. Yeah. So so okay. So, so let me this plan. Let me the uh, the okay the the scenario different. Okay. So I'm a serverless platform. Okay. Yes. So for serverless platform, it's going to handle so many different events, so many different uses scenario, right? So one user scenario is interested in the uh, consumer. Uh, the, the burglar system, the, the house, okay. Mm -hmm. But there are many other scenarios. So as a service platform, so I'm the service platform, I yes. do not know whether I'm interested in, because I do not really, um, I'm not, service platform is not the application developer. When I say application, I mean the burglar system, okay, developer. I'm not the burglar the system developer. I'm just a, a middleware a platform that, you know, receive the event, I route it, to your function, to your application, the burglary uh, detection uh, function, right? Yes. So, so as a service problem, I do not know whether I'm interested in you know, a, a house or I'm interested in the tribal request ID. I have no idea. You yes, know? but, but so then, what you know, what you know mm -hmm. is, is that someone can, can publish to a, to a path and yep. you can provide them with everything that matches a certain prefix of that path. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. So I would need the application developer, which is a burglary detection function application developer. I need him to let, to tell my service platform say, oh, I'm interested, you know, in this house. So he exactly. needs to let me know what he is interested in. He, okay. The, what, what's the correlation token? His what? application. Needs. What, the, what, what the what the what the you have a you have a the topic is a path, and you're always interested in either that exact path or a prefix of that path. Exactly. Look at it that way. There's no there's no correlation token. There no, is no, no. When I say correlation topic, token, so so Clement, let, let me finish. Yeah. When I say correlation token, that token can be a path. Okay, okay good. Straight. Right. Okay, I'm just using that as the you know what I need. Okay, I'm not saying there should be a specific uh, uh, you know correlation token field there. Of course, if the producer putting that, that's fine. But it's just a string. That string could be a URL. It could be a, like in JSON format. Could, could be a pass identifier. Okay. Yes, and, it, and yeah. so my what I'm, saying, what I'm saying what I'm yeah. saying is, and mm -hmm. my battery is just about to die. So um, mm -hmm. because I had to switch computers this morning. Okay. Um, 
is, and I have no power here, so I have to hang up. Um, the, uh, um, what I'm saying is that your notion of a correlation token is exactly what I mean with, to with topic. Okay, so, so the, that's good. So let, let's see, just, okay, let me remember. So then I need the, the application developer, the function, you know, logic developer to tell the service platform, say, okay, I'm, you know, my, Co the correlation token, uh, when I say correlation token, it just uh, yes. meaning, it not means, okay, um, is a uh, house, you know, is this, you know, um, pass to that house number, or is a yes. URI, uh, you know, to that, you know, or is a, a travel request ID. So that's why I need a field, I need someone, you know, um, to tell the, the service platform, need the function developer tell it what he needs. And then I can just, you know, when I get the event data, I can extract, you know, that message based on the specification of that token, you know, yeah. whether it's travel ID or it's a, a what, and then, you know, to extract the value, right? Yeah. If you say it's a house, I'm going to extract the house number or house address. If it's as, a travel. But as the middle, as the middleware, you are just doing, and as the middleware, you can ignore all that, all the, all the specifics. And yeah, just, whatever he tells me. Yeah, it's a string or it's just a string. It can be your ID or it can be a, a, a path yeah. identifier. So yeah. I would like to put this inside, you know, this spec so that, you know, the function developer knows, okay, he needs to specify this. And then the, the you know, the, what's that? Of course, if the event producer put a correlation token uh, as a key, that's good. That's okay. Perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, but I would like that to be. In yeah, so so let me let, I will I will me, try to make that a little clearer for tomorrow. Okay. Yeah yeah. So let's just say you know you can use a string or use a URI, but you know correlation token is the meaning. It's what it means. Otherwise, if we just say topic, you know the the uh, the function developer doesn't know what's that topic. What topic are you you need? Well, most but in, terms, in terms of a lot of people know what a topic is. Um, no, no, and, topic has and, to but, be specific, right? There are many, many what? semantics of topic. So one of the topic will be a correlation token. That's my point. Yes. You can say and, the topic could be other I, things you need. I, I, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. And I think your notion of a correlation token is perfectly satisfied by the concept of, the, of topic that we have. Yeah, but, so besides but, URL, I think let's just say it could be a path identifier because sometimes yes. it's in JSON formats. Let's extend that. Otherwise, if we, we just say it's a, it's a, it's a URL, you know, in some cases. URI. URI is sufficient. URI, URI cover, covers pretty much everything. Okay, URI is good, but we give some example. And then people, because yes. most commonly use it's JSON. Yeah, let's just, uh, yeah, use that. Okay, that's good. good. Um, maybe we can that's discuss enough. it a bit further. <laughs> Have some time uh, sorting this up. I mean, to how to write this up. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I, very I good. Have to hang up. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.